Welcome back to Big Water Podcast. This week we have kind of an odd duck, but a hot odd. Matt Robertson, the Onum guy, Bassmaster Elite Series, and just all around nut job fisherman. Matt, you know, he doesn't pull punches and he certainly doesn't with us. Matt Robertson, this week on the Big Water Podcast. Producer dude, here we are again, and you know, I hate to say this out loud, but we normally, we make a uh, unspoken rule that we don't have bass people on. Now, we made an exception for two-time Bass Master Angle of the Year, so I don't know if we're psychic or whatever, but because he had not won Angle of the Year at the point we had him Brandon, on Brandon Palinick. Yeah. yeah, Brandon, Brandon Palinick, because my people like things with teeth, right? The, the, the green carp, the ditch pickles, whatever you want to call them, it's like, eh. But I think we're going to make an exception. And I know I sent you a few pictures and a couple links and you're like, okay, okay. I can see where this is going. This guy might even be a distant you know, relative of mine, Matt Robertson. The guy has been just killing it, whether it's the full length fur coat and the sleeveless jersey on the Bassmaster Elite Series or not. The guy's catching fish and he's kind of a hoot. And uh, I kind of like that he's I like to say like myself, or maybe I'm like him and that he calls it like it is. Sometimes people don't like it, but it's just a hot mess, dumpster fire, a good time. So I'm hoping he doesn't uh, pull any punches and I don't even think he knows how to. So uh, did you see those videos or those things? I did, and and you didn't mention that he he fishes on $80 ugly sticks, right? You know, we, we, yeah, I, you know, I didn't even think to tell you that because I I didn't think you would even know that, but our people. Yeah. um, That's like a step. Well, his boat is. Right. His boat, his boat is the ugly stick rap deal. And this year, I use G Loomis, which are some of the more known, nicer right. rods. Yeah, you don't even let me look at those rods, right? I, I, no, I would can't. feel at home in no. his boat. I, I, he probably let me touch them, and you know, at yes. eighty dollars. Eight, I think eighty might be expensive yeah. for those. A lot of those are thirty, forty dollar rods. Right. So yeah. But at any rate, let's bring him on before he decides not to do this. Um, but this guy's a hoot, and I'm hoping we get to see a little bit of that personality. <laughs> I'm gonna check the battery back at my my second back. That bullshit. I don't see it, fellas. I don't remember what I did with that mother. Unless it fell over here. But I did have a damn tripod. There's a box. Maybe you can just set it on the box. <laughs> no shit. Matt Robertson, welcome to the Big Water Podcast, man. I feel like this has been a long time coming, even if neither one of us knew it. Oh, yeah, buddy. Uh, must have been destiny, but I'm with you. I'm happy to be here, chat it up with you fellas tonight. We're going to have a damn good time. I- I'm wondering. There's, I think it's a 50-50 deal that you might be one of my bastard cousins or something. <laughs> I'm going to say it's more like a pretty damn good chance now. I'm not, and in all serious, this producer who doesn't even know this, but uh, my dad's from Missouri, as they would say, and he had eight, um, eight grand or his grandpa, his family had like eight brothers, and then his dad had like seven. So, oh, yeah, know, there's plenty like a, down the road there to connect us. I know that. I was yeah, wondering yeah. about that. I, I was, <laughs> that was going to be my first question. Yeah, I mean, producer, dude, he watched a couple of your videos. He always, because, you know, like, he doesn't know sometimes all these people. He don't fish. And so he's like, he goes, I think you guys might be cut from the same cloth if you get downright dirty getting you guys together. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you don't give a shit and you little country and redneck, then we might be kin for sure. I I saw one of your things you you put up on something. I can't remember. It was actually one of the first things I saw with you was, was a video where you were drilling a hole in your trailer with a sawzall with your wife <laughs> yeah. yeah and that was i was like me and this guy got to fish together i'll take you i'll take you up here do some walleye fishing and then we'll trade you for some smallmouth or something man because uh i think me and you are cut from the same cloth <laughs> ain't no doubt buddy that was a damn mess too i bought my damn bathtub cracked went and got another one and it was different i had to replumb it and damn didn't have a big enough hole and i can't i'm not a plumber i don't know what the hell i'm doing i got that saws on i swear to god i cut a hole in the floor for big around as a beach ball just to get the damn plumbing and shit plumbed in for the new tub jesus 
that's one of those you might want to phone a friend on for a case of beer or something. Oh, yeah. I phoned my plumbing buddy, and he's just like, what the hell did you do? I was like, hell, dude, how do y'all work? There ain't no damn room down here. One of my captain buddies always says, don't don't f*** up anything that I can't fix. <laughs> that's a good anyway, one. So, so I see your hat there on them, you know, and you've got yeah. a lot of people wearing that on them thing. So, I mean, I think it's probably self-explanatory how this all started, but this on them thing, not that you ain't catching them, because catching them is how yeah. people get to know you. Ain't but sometimes there's a little bit of showmanship and on them. Like, give me the backstory on that. Like, that's just... It's simple, but it's clever, right? Yeah, dude. Um, it's just it's it's a saying that's ever everybody said for years, and uh, and is it's just something we printed on a hat, and some boys thought it was, you know, it's kind of a at first they thought it was kind of you know an arrogant thing. Oh, you better catch them if you're gonna wear something like that. And I told them, I said, boys, I don't give a shit. Like I'll wear it, not wear it, wearing bass. Like we're gonna do it, whatever. But yeah. Dude, like, I, I honestly never thought it would have taken off like it did. And uh, it, it's it's awesome, I got to tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's and you've got people wearing it that bass fish, don't bass fish, kayak oh, yeah. people, wall, walleye people. I mean, the little merch sales there probably don't hurt the pocket any either. No, nah, buddy, I got to tell you, it, it definitely helps. Um no, but I appreciate I appreciate every single people, every single person that buys one and, and and represents it. It's pretty humbling, really. And I'm not a real like I feel like I'm a humble guy. But whenever you see people out, kids wearing it, adults, people, you know, all over the country, I've shipped these things to Australia and Canada, and it's uh, it's unreal. I mean, do you think that? I mean, because, you know, I fish the wall ideal. You're doing the bass thing, obviously. So it's yeah. apples and oranges, but it's the, it's the same it's the same deal, right? Kind of. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that, like, bass fishermen are either two – or let's not even say bass. Let's just say fishermen, right? Because yeah. you fishing for catfish, crappie, it don't really matter. Yeah, are yeah. fishermen nowadays, because of tournaments and people wearing tournament shirts all over the place, people that don't even whatever or, or guys that are doing it for a living – do you think that they're either too serious about themselves or are they getting too phony? Because it just seems like the money and the Instagram and all the shit has just gotten, I don't know. It's gotten crazy. Yeah. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if they're phony. I think there's a lot of guys out there that, that are scared to be themselves because, you know, if you look at the textbook bass fishermen, or I'm going to, I'm going to guess walleye fishermen too. They, they walk that straight and narrow path, you know, and, and yeah, man, like they just, I think they need to show their real personality. Cause I know some of them, like I, I know some of them that put on this persona and I know that's not them, you know, cause I listen to them cuss and raise hell and carry on. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, not even the, the religion angle, but just fishermen. You're hundred percent right because yeah. you don't even know this, but uh, somebody that we both know in the industry. That's kind of how when I when I started saying like, you know, we gotta get this guy on here because that's why. We, I mean, yeah. like, whether you catch him or don't catch him, like, you're my type of guy. Yeah. And so many of these people. Well, I guess getting back. So this, so this industry guy, who's a guy that writes the checks for an awful lot of people in our world. Yeah. He uh, he like text you and said, hey, man, and we, we won't say exactly what. Yeah, we'll get into oh, that. Yeah, but fine. hey, man, you, you got to apologize for this and get ahead of this. And you you told him I ain't worried about it. Yeah. You and know, I love that. And, and you I know, love respecting. It. I know exactly what you're talking about. I love the guy to death and and I respect him so much. And but I got to tell you, like, like. I don't apologize for too much, buddy, in life like. <laughs> like we can we can forgive and for you know forget but you know say if i apologize and then i'm gonna tell you my i'll tell you the problem with it is my word is my honor and a lot of people just blow smoke and hot air nowadays if i say something it's because what i believe and it's the truth and i won't never walk on that because at the end of the day your word's all you got and i can't apologize for something i don't feel like i was wrong in so that's what it boils down to. So, Ross, I, I want to stop the podcast for a second. Oh, I, I know. Okay. We'll, get back, we'll get back to the guest in a minute. I saw you. I was, <laughs> I was looking at stuff. I was researching. Get it? I was researching 
for oh my god you're, you're doing your job oh my god i'm doing my job and i was on something like called like powder puff which i don't know why you're on powder puff but i saw your face on something called powder puff or something like powder that. hook man powderhook.com okay well what is that well <laughs> as you uh, kind of found out we're cheating on a little bit normally the fellow listeners there at Big Water know that you have to tease me with ice cream to give a fishing report because I quite frankly hate them. But we are doing an extensive fishing report amongst other things with uh, powderhook.com and they've got a bunch of things across Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff too. But we're doing a detailed fishing report. They're talking about really detailed stuff with what's going on specifically on Lake Erie here in the western and central basins and even a few times there in the eastern basin in the summer now through may of 2023 so we're going to be doing lots of stuff and I, you already seen some of it because this, you caught me red-handed but we've got a perch you know information on it we're talking about planer boards we've got all kinds of different information but with myself and then some other lake erie studs that basically are teaching how to catch more walleyes what's going on currently and i mean powder hook powderhook.com it's it's a one-stop shop right now for lake erie info whether it's a fishing report videos or some you know written articles how to you know select a charter captain like myself different things to think about and talk about so a lot of unique things there as you already know so powderhook.com that's where we go don't you think i mean i got into fishing as a young kid and you know my parents weren't really into it or whatever fortunately yeah. i got to that that route i'm sure your story is about the same as mine it don't matter if you're yeah. fishing for whatever you got money you don't have money or whatever right but i but i think that the reality is is i got into it not to get notoriety or money ever and i think that yeah. that's why a little bit of both you know came and worked out because i never was looking for it you just kept grinding and kind of like what you're doing yeah. now in the elite series and but don't you think there's just a lot of guys though that are they're not doing it for the love of the sport. That's exactly. They're the majority of fishermen are doing it for, um, you know, because they honestly, as bad as I hate to say it, they like. I just want to be popular and shit, you know. And I got a, I got a friend. I was, I was with him the other day, and and he just swapped jobs. I asked him. I said, dude, is there not like, is there not like something you really want to do, like a passion? He's like. Man, I'll be honest with you. He said, I just want to be somebody. You know, I want to be somebody who's respected in the hunting world. And I told him, I was like, you realize anybody who's anybody don't give a shit about being anybody. You realize that, right? So if you're in this and you're listening to this and you're doing this to be somebody, buddy, you're wasting your time because you got to do it because you love what you do, you know? Like, the guy, everybody I know don't give a shit about being famous or nothing like that, you know. I'm not saying I'm famous. Like, I love all my fans and everything, but I just, I fish because I love to fish. So, right. and so you man, know, how did how did you get into it? How did, how did it all start for you? Like, you know, you are somebody now, right? But where did it start for you? Um, man, I was actually, uh, God, you want it from the beginning, like whenever I was young? Yeah, yeah, we want to know how you, how you got going. I was born in San Diego, California, and I lived there till I was about 10. I started uh, fishing in San Diego with my grandparents and um, started fishing, did a lot of crappie fishing, a lot of bass fishing out there on Lake Hodges and San Vicente and Miramar Lake, and, and moved here whenever I was 10. My dad still lives in San Diego, and my mom took me fishing a bunch, and and yeah man just uh whenever i was 11 i started fishing tournaments with my grandma of all people and yeah i was i was 11. Did grandma whoops some ass uh yeah she could hold her own let me tell you like she's hardcore bass or uh hardcore fisherman at that she wasn't you know your typical you know run around grandma like she'd go out there our first tournament we ever fished it was a high 36 degrees if that tells you anything we're out there in a 16 and a half foot bass tracker with a 45 horse on it and yeah getting after it so and i remember i caught a damn two and three quarter pound smallmouth on a rattle trap and i took that thing up to the way and like i was going to win the damn tournament you know <laughs> and uh, of course didn't do no good but but yeah that yeah that's how i got into tournament fishing and from then on man i just like i just kept it going and i got uh got a little older got out of high school went to school to be a machinist and uh 
I built plastic injection and aluminum die cast molds. So, uh, and that, and what got me into it was I built all my own liver molds and, you know, machine designed them, machined them and poured the baits and stuff. And, and yeah, man, I just, I kind of kept the ball going, the ball rolling and started doing real well on Kentucky Lake. And dude, I was making good money back home fishing. Like, like you hear a lot of tournament fishermen, especially at the local level, talk about making money. And, and the truth is there's, I might guess, 1% of local fishermen making money in local tournaments. But Is this like Saturday, like regionals, or is this like Tuesday nighters or all the above? No, yeah, you ain't making that money in Tuesday nighters. I'm talking about like... Um, Little BFLs. Big, and big, op big open tournaments on like Kentucky Lake and stuff. You know, I was fishing... Uh, I'll give you an example. In three weeks, I won $54,000 on Kentucky Lake between the Triton Tournament, the Strike King Tournament, South on Kentucky Lake. I won two BFLs in a row, uh, $10,000 Big Bass Tournament, and there's another one in there. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, like I'm talking about fishing local five, ten thousand dollars tournaments, and, and some of that was bonus money from Triton, too. And, but I was knocking down some good money back home, uh, just fishing local derbs. And, and I'll be honest with you, the, if the carp had never gotten Kentucky Lake and, and the fishing's not as good there now, it's getting better. But if the, if the tournaments would have never left Kentucky Lake, I'm going to tell you, like, I would have never pursued it. Like, cause I was, I was working, fishing, making good money and the kind of, the fishing went to crap tournaments went away and i was like hell man if if i'm gonna ever give this a crack you know we're gonna it's gonna have to be now so we started started fishing the opens and and the bass nation and yeah a few years later damn next thing you know we're fishing the elite series somehow that that that's a that's a like you say 20 year uh what's the saying a 20 year overnight success right like people yeah, they, don't realize it's crazy you just gotta I mean, be able to this swing. Is all I've ever done my whole life, you know. I missed my high school graduation to go fish a fish a BFL, and uh, and yeah, dude, it's like a lot of people don't realize. Like it was a, it was a life. It was twenty something years. That's a you know, if, it takes a long time to do that. But I think what it is is you know, correct me when I'm wrong. You got to be able to, to make contact on the bat on the ball when you get that opportunity right so you got to be okay. ready and, and and qualified and and maybe it took you 10 15 years to to get to yeah. that point yeah i think a lot of guys tried a little too early too you know they get into bass fishing and they and and they see the magazines and they see the glory and stuff and and a lot of a lot of people don't realize that these guys are like they're seasoned and guys will go fish at the local level, local level two or three years, and then try to jump right into the opens. And I'm gonna tell you what, you're gonna have, you gotta know your shit whenever you jump in that game, you know. Like I think it would do a lot of them a lot of good to, uh, you know, get a little more experience nonetheless. Well, some of the opens nowadays, I mean, obviously this is not my cup of tea, but a lot of guys claim that that's as tougher, tougher than the elites because you have more of that that homer local stuff, right? Dude, not only that, but dude, the, the opens is you got 225 boats instead of, you know, 100. And and I'm talking about some banger fishermen. Like guys, I mean, you got elite fishermen in the opens. You have guys, you know, trying to get back to the elites. Like you got the best of the best in the country rolling through the opens. Like 100%, I would agree that the, the opens are tougher competition so you've got a term kind of we were talking about you know the too serious or phony or however that kind of works together but proper bassman yeah proper, how, how is that your term or how did that come about that is i gotta give this to him it's pat renwick's uh uh term on stray cast he uh Man, me, him, and Seth were just talking, and then I can't remember exa the exact time it come up, but uh, we was chatting about proper bass and, you know, people doing things right and uh, and not trying to see the gray area and the rules and just uh, doing everything with, uh, you know, moral code and ethics, you know, 
going out there and finding them and hunting the fish down and you know like it's meant to be done um not this grabbing the phone and calling to get help and all that shit talk about going in, out there putting in your hard honest work and reaping the benefits from it the right way you know i mean as you've gotten maybe more notoriety or as you continue to do better on the water yeah. and on on the higher league things are you having less or more run-ins on the water um man i'll tell you what i get along i get along with most people in the elites and haven't had too many run-ins um i had a little run-in with brandon card at oahe and i think he's kind of past that now because he talked to me at, at the mississippi river but uh he was leading after day one and he i guess he caught them all off this one spot and i didn't know that at the time but i'd fished there the first day with him and and i was fishing close to him and and he kind of i pulled up the first day and he was like you think i'd get a little room i said i was like no buddy i said you pulled up right next to me and fished i said you're the last person who's asked for that and uh then and i caught a couple and then the second day he was there and i rolled up there and fished with him and you know he didn't like it i assumed he already caught him like i didn't think he didn't, i didn't know he didn't have him but nonetheless i didn't care um but i roll up there and he kept i catch one he catches one he reties and then he comes back to the back of the boat and you know i was trying to have a conversation with me and and was like you know you know matt if if you were leading day one and i pulled up here you really wouldn't like it that much and i was like i was like brandon i said I, you know i really wouldn't give a shit buddy like i wouldn't give a crap he's like well you, you wouldn't like it if i pulled up here if you were leading it and you know i was like dude i pretty much told him i didn't give a shit and I was fishing there. I told him I had four, so let me catch one more and I'll let you have it. And I meant it. And uh and yeah, dude, like um here's the thing. If it was well, day, you went that you went there on day one, you said I was I was there, there day one and he knows that. And I even told him I said I said, Brandon, I said I didn't poach the hole from you, dude. Like I told him I said I'm not a hole poacher, I didn't poach it from you. He's like, I know, I'm not saying that. And uh and yeah, I just like I ain't got no quarrels with Brandon right now. Like me and him talked to uh, Wisconsin, everything's good. But, um, but yeah, dude, he, uh, let me put it to you like this. I've been in a few fights in my life. And, and if me and you get into a fight, if you hit me and knock me down, does that mean I let you, you know, on the second and second round, does that mean I get to let you knock the shit out of me twice just for free? No, I'm going to get back in there. <laughs> And I'm going to try to get ahead. Like, that's just the way it is. Now, if it was day four and he was leading it, if it was day four and he was leading it or day three and I was 10 pounds behind, yeah, I'd let him have it. Okay. Like, I don't have no problem with it, but it's day one and, and I've had a decent bag and I'm not like, it's not out of the realms of possibility for me, me to make it up by no means. So, yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go out there and do what we gotta do. Well, in the walleye world, I mean, I don't think it'd be any different. If, if you weren't there on day one, maybe that's a little different. Maybe I, if no, I was yeah, if I wasn't shoot. there on day one, by all means, if I was not there on day one and he was leading it, and then I rode up, buddy, he could chew my ass. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm not the person that would do that. How, how much self policing is still going on now with all the the dollar bills and all the egos and the wrap trucks? <laughs> uh, I think for the most part. Um, I got to tell you, I think most of the guys in the elite series are are pretty straight up, straightforward, and honest. But I still think you have those. I still think there's a handful. Like they're not going out and throwing fish in a basket, but I'm not going to say they ain't shady about. They 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 read every single rule in the book and they look for the gray areas and they try to, you know. They try to pull a few stunts, I think. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how deep you want to get, but I know from my outside deal, there's definitely a, a guy in Major League Fishing and one in the elites right now that are kind of known for the 
pushing the envelope, shall we say? And if it wasn't them or a big name guy, they probably would be in deep shit. Oh, there ain't no doubt. You know, I mean, and everybody knows who they are. We don't have to say their name, but they, uh, they, them guys, the world knows who they are now. You know, I mean, bottom line. So, I mean, I think I, I like you because I think it's pretty genuine. Not that there's not some showmanship that goes into this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're going to do this for long enough, it's even with what we do. We do educational videos yeah, and yeah. things like that. But, but we try to put a little spin on it because nobody wants to hear you talk like, uh, I, I mean, know like, how. you know, electronic, you know what I mean? Like, so there's a little bit of pizzazz that gets thrown in that. But yeah, yeah. I, have you had pretty good feedback? Because like, I can remember I was at the classic when you uh, were throwing the water bottles around. And I'm just like, I was loving it. And then there was a couple old old guys that work in the industry that, that were there and they were like, Ugh. And I said, listen, man, look, look at the kids on this. It ain't like, you know, you, you were doing yeah. the Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'll let you take over. But I, it's important to get some of these younger people involved. And you know what? The 75-year-old guy, not that he's not important to the game and didn't do a lot. Yeah. You know, the Denny Brower deal. I'm sure like Denny Brower is not like your biggest fan probably. But actually, oh, well. I think Denny likes me all right. Yeah. Does he? Oh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, even like the Gary Kleins and that, like that. I'm picking, I'm picking on the I old don't guys. Know but... Gary does, but I mean, <laughs> um, but I got to tell you, like, I, I know what you're saying. Um, let me put it to you like this. If there's any old guys out there that that think a little bit about that um, or, or, you know, kind of like, not like my antics, think about it like this, especially at the Classic. You got people traveling three, four, 10 hours, people flying across country, people coming in from other countries across the world. And they're coming in there and to watch us fish. They're coming to the weigh-ins to watch us weigh in. And I gotta tell you, I'm gonna tell you, a Bassmaster weigh-in is boring, okay? <laughs> and I think the fishermen, I'm not saying everybody's gotta be a Gerald Swindle and be entertaining, okay? But I think you have to, I think it's kind of disrespectful to not put on a little bit of the show for the people. Like, I'm not doing it for me. I'm, I'm Well, I'm doing it because I like to, and I do whatever the hell I want half the time. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know, give them a little entertainment. These people came from all across the world to see you, you know. And they don't want to sit there and be bored out of their mind for two and a half hours watching the weigh-in. You know what I mean? And and a lot of those old people, ask them how much music they like. Ask them, you know, ask all anybody, any old guy, you like listening to music? You ever been to a concert? Yeah, I, they complain about shitty, boring concerts, don't they? And then you have a, you know, hear Kid Rock or Aerosmith back in the day or whoever put on a killer concert. You know, it's the same thing. Like, you don't want to travel to see somebody and it be boring. So we're going to put on a little show for them, whether the old codgers like it or not. When I first saw your thing, I thought two things. I said, his wife must be a saint, number one. I mean, which yeah. is fair. And then I thought, you might be like kind of like in that fur coat deal. You got to explain the fur coat deal because that kind of, that was like the kid rock efficient right there. And I would wear yeah. that like a badge of honor if there was somebody was throwing that at me. So, so Dana, I actually... Um, yeah, I planned on wearing the fur coat. I knew it'd be a little chilly at Knoxville and, and I ordered the coat out of East Germany and <laughs> I know dude, like I feel like whenever I buy a fur coat, um, I always buy them out of East Germany, Ukraine or at Eastern Europe. You're being serious. Like you've bought more than one fur coat. It's, it's oh, yeah, the I, best bought three, Ross. <laughs> I bought three of them out of, uh, out of the Middle East or, you know, Russia, Ukraine or whatever. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Let's let's slow this down. You've bought three fur coats in the recent past. And this yep. for your wife, or is this just for your pet? Oh, for me, because I know how to look good. <laughs> Let me tell you something, boys. Listen, I dress like a ratchet half the time. Like like Corey told me the other day. Like he, you know, he told me I dress like a homeless person, dirty pants, a pair of dirty New Balance shoes, and a t shirt. And mm -hmm. he was like, "You need to." He's like, you dress like shit, you know? I was like, what do I need? He's like, a pair of boots. And I looked, I looked at Ashton, our camera guy. I was like, what do you think? He's like, yeah, he's right, bud. Looked at Chris. He's like, yeah. So I was like, all right.
Let's go. So I bought me a pair of drip boots, some nice jeans, and a damn nice button-up shirt. And I didn't I felt a little awkward, but damn, I look good. Well, I got to be honest with you. You know, like when you're from Ohio, I, I'm a Yankee, right? And you're a redneck. Yeah. Even though I'm 100%. I'm a redneck, I'm a redneck that's a Yankee. But yeah. when, when I see you, I just think like you know, if you were one of my fishing buddies, like Bo and Do Luke. I mean, that's the stereotype I'm gonna throw at you. You ain't gonna be. Oh bad. yeah. But but when you tell me he's from California, producer dude, there's a little Spicoli in there. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, locks, yeah, yeah. There's he a little there, Spicoli. He lived there for like, a little I, while. Yeah. I, I want to know that. about I, the. Uh, I know about the tattoos there on your left arm and why you got those. Uh, the Break them out. Pack. Break them out. Yeah, yeah. the bass Break, and the Break. American flag. Listen, these, but... these people, the, these people that are watching this yeah. on YouTube instead of Spotify or Amazon or something, they they need to They're be blessed. <laughs> yeah. All right. So he's on them. So at the Classic in Fort Worth, Texas, I wanted to wear a cutoff jersey. And because I didn't do that well in my first classic and I thought, and I kind of, I tried too hard. I made it more than what it is. And one thing you never want to do in bass fishing, rather it's a lead series, a classic or a $50 club tournament, you know, you got to not give a shit about doing bad. So I was like, I want to treat this like a tournament I'd fish back home, just wear a cutoff. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I made a cutoff jersey. And the only thing I saw in, in the, uh, in the rules was I had to have a, a bass patch. So, so yeah, I got the, got the damn. There it is. Bass There's the bass patch on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. and, I was uh, at that classic and I watched that live. I was, that yeah. was naughty. If I don't show loyalty and dedication, I don't know what it does. So, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh. yeah, shit, dude. I, I actually, a lot of people, some people gave me shit over it, but I used a, uh, a temporary tattoo for the American flag and and I got a little shit over that but what people don't think about is and I'm telling you the dude who did that is one of the best tattoo artists I ever seen and like he's no joke and I asked him to do the American flag he's like dude he said I would do it he's like but if I do the American flag and there's one little cup on it he's like you're going to get criticized so bad and it wasn't any, the only thing that stopped him from doing it was the stars on the American flag. Cause you stick an American flag that big There's on little your stars. It was two and a half by three, I think. <laughs> and you got 50 little tiny white stars. He's like, dude, the odds of getting every one of them perfect, it's not going to happen. So that's why we didn't do that. But so how did the, uh, how, how did the bass take this or how are they taking it now? Uh, is are, are you allowed to still wear the cutoff shirts and and um, no it, i'm not allowed to wear the cutoff shirts right now i wore it in the classic last year and they they were good about it like bass is uh bass has been good to work with on that stuff and, and i think they see see the benefit to it a little bit you know and uh um they i think they see it's not hurting nothing the first time i came out i we uh we ironed on all the logos, like printed them off from that iron on paper from Walmart on the printer at home and took a gray t-shirt and ironed them on there. And it kind of looked, it, looked, it wasn't really professional. I thought it looked good, but it really <laughs> wasn't professional. So, so this time we, uh, I took out one of my actual jerseys and, and I cut it real clean, almost looked like it was seamed and yeah dude it, it was it looked good producer dude I'm, I'm gonna interject here so i was at that classic i was i was working in the convention i came over to watch some of the way in and saw this obviously knowing this is not going to happen just i i learned live and direct like everybody else but i can tell you the people went nuts and overwhelmingly the people loved it yeah i'm not picking on bass i'm not i don't care you know that these producer dude, these, these bass organizations are just like walleye stuff. They're fighting with each other. And then this guy goes here and there or whatever. I don't mean this derogatory towards bass, but if people weren't going nuts and it was just like a silence or an, Ooh, you'd have been a deep shit. You would have been a deep shit, but they couldn't, it was like, let's ride this momentum instead of sticking our finger, you know, in yeah. our eye. In my, in my opinion. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? I thought that's I, good about it, man. I got to tell you, I mean, I, I thought it was they, great. They supported me on it. Yeah. But, and it's also because it's like, it's just you and your personality. Like you said, if some of these other guys, angler A, B or C, if they're, they would be doing it just yeah. 
as they, you know what I mean? Cause they ain't living yeah. it. Like you're, like you said, the producer, you can back us on this. Like the shenanigans that we do, we're doing them when there's no cameras rolling. I promise. Oh you. yeah. And it's, I think it's the same way with you knowing that we got some mutual friends and uh, that that's kind of the way it's got to be. Right. Yeah. You know, I think a lot, you know, I had a whole lot of people and you know what? Um, I see their point. I get it. I had a whole lot of people really question like my personality and they're like, is this dude really like this? They, they're like, no, nah, ain't no way. It's all just a show. I just got done racing in a damn demolition race, fucking five races last night. The night before on Saturday night, I just drove a daggum Jeep Grand Cherokee through like a 55 car demolition race. So, so if they're, I don't think nobody's questioning it now. I think they get it. But if anybody doubts it, come roll with me for a week. Cause buddy, I'm going to tell you what, there ain't a bone in your body that can hang with me. Are, are we talking for uh, like redneck skills? We talking drinking, fishing or I'm all the above? About that ain't too many people gonna walk in my shoes for a week and and i'm telling you it's just it's a shit show producer dude, i want to i want to back up a second and see if you caught what i caught you know because we got terms we use and it and the people love it like on some of the yeah. videos we've got these different sayings and like one of them's donkey that's what i call big big walleye or whatever yeah he producer dude did you hear him say ratchet like I, I need some explanation on ratchet because I feel like that's like a donkey type term or something that needs to get integrated here. Ratchet is <laughs> I've never been asked that, but uh a ratchet's just like uh one of those crazy redneck guys that uh <laughs> they ain't quite all right in the head and do about anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I think we all know some ratchet. The wheel don't spin, there's some clicking in there. <laughs> Oh gosh. So, I mean, what are some of the craziest things that you've seen or been involved with in fishing? Because I ask guys that fish a lot, you know, like I spend 250 days in the boat every year and have for 20 plus years and yeah. you see some weird stuff, right? There's a deer swimming out across nowhere, some lady and her husband get caught doing something or people falling out or whatever. Oh yeah. As a traveling guy or even Kentucky Lake, Kentucky Lake's a pretty crazy lake with stuff. Yeah. What what are some of the funnier things? I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I mean, there's there's got to be some shenanigans that stick up there that people ask you or you, you think about, no? Dude, like as far as stuff I've seen other people do, it's not too terrible. I mean, I've seen about a 38-foot yacht blast into a riprap wall one night, night fishing. And uh, I mean... Honestly, the like I've done half the craziest shit I ever seen on the water that I wouldn't think I'd ever done. Um, Such as, like, I, like at, at Lake Oahe on the last day, man sat there fishing beside each other, and and yeah, I ain't got it's ten o'clock. I ain't got a fish in the boat, and I pull up next to him, and he loses about a four or five pounder trying to boat flip it, and I'm like, and kind of ruined the mood, and we was cutting up, having fun. And he caught one, and, and he's like, he looks over at me, he's like, Maddie, take off your pants. Fish in your body. <laughs> well, I mean, let me back up. This is this all come from this, this one of our you, fans out you, here. Which, one of our fans. You got some which, weird friends, too. <laughs> I know, buddy. Some of our fans out there that we become friends with went and eat dinner with us was wearing a uh, American flag speedo on a big, you know, blonde, I mean, this color blonde wig, except way more extravagant. And... <laughs> And I tried to get the speedo from him, and uh, and I said something about maybe wearing it out there the next day. Well, he didn't really want to come off of it, and I don't blame him because it's pretty badass speedo. And I was like, hell, I'll just do it in my whitey tidies, you know. And and I just joking at the time. Like, I wasn't, didn't even think about it. Seth was like, take your pants off fishing whitey tidies. I was like, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Nah, we're all right. He's like, how many? He said, he said, how many fish you got in a live well? I was like, none. He was like, he was like, listen. He said, we was in a good mood catching fish, and I lost that one ruined the mood. He's like, she need to take it off. I was like, I ain't got no fish. And he was like, so. <laughs> he said, so take the damn things off. And I thought to myself, okay, let's just do this. So I stripped down to my whitey tidies and start fishing. He catches a daggum four seven, which is a giant up there. 
like there's bigger ones in there, but you know, final day, you know, four and a half is going to go a long way. And then he tells me, then we get to going backwards and forth and tells me I can't take, I can't put my damn pants back on, you know, because we're catching fish and having fun. I'm like, it's like, hell, I got to catch fish if I'm going to keep them off. He was like, hell no, Matty, you know, you know, he's like, you want to be a team player? And I'm like, oh. Says the guy with his pants on. Yeah, right. Says the guy with his pants on. But anyways, left my damn pants off for about 30, 45 minutes. And uh, and Wes, one of the drone guys, wanted to fly the drone, but he said he couldn't with my pants off. And they asked me to put him back on. I told Wes no. And even fighters like hell. <laughs> and uh, and then Lisa messaged my camera guy in the back of the boat and asked me to take put my pants back on. And I was like, who, who's so, Lisa? Yeah, she's the tournament director for Bass. And I was like, anything for you, Lisa. So I slipped them back on. But uh, hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done it. It was like an in-the-moment thing. Didn't really plan on it. But that, you know, it's just I see it. a new rule coming at Bass 2023. <laughs> <laughs> There's already been one or two rules in there for me, so you might as well add another one. Yeah. Well, can we talk about that? Uh, the jerseys have to have sleeves on them, but they may, I don't know, man. Like I got a feeling they may, um, I think as long as it's done in a professional manner and they may not, I mean, I'd like to think that they might, you know, make it where we can wear a sleeveless jersey. Um, at least maybe for the classic or something like that, you know, um, cause it's really no harm in that, but you know, hindsight probably shouldn't have stripped down to the waddy tidies. Um, did know. you get any serious flack from anybody you work with on that? Um, it was a, it was some mixed feelings, you know. Some of them uh, older <laughs> OG fishermen didn't like it, and some of the old, other fishermen was like, "Hell, if you know, if I, if Maddie wants fishing his waddy toddies, let him." You know, like I don't. I had one one older fisherman really, you know, really not like it, and I told him, "I said, dude, did it affect your paycheck?" Like, did it affect anything about your life? No. Like, all right then. Like, kick rocks. So. I mean, you're never going to please them all. No. I'll tell you who liked it. The ladies. The ladies. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and it's hey, and it's such a double standard because you go on Instagram or you go to iCast and these chicks are running around in bikinis, like, I mean, like with nothing, right? And you're in tidy ways. There's more coverage there even. Yeah, I mean, it, it just kind of is what it is, you know. I mean, there's, um, yeah, it just, it, it happened. It was a in the moment thing. And I really like it just, it, it happened. It's And it's behind us now, so. Can't go back and change that. I don't know. I, I got to be honest. One thing that kind of surprises me about you a little bit, and you know, I don't know you super well or anything. Yeah, like yeah. This, but because, it, and it's the same thing. Because we're, we're, I guess, I'm not comparing myself to you, but I just some of the similarities. Like you naturally just kind of go because you, you're trying to like figure somebody out a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. And when when I do media stuff with people, especially like I said, the people OGs or people, I would say like a lot of the media people. When you've got producers or camera guys just like yeah, you yeah. have they've been doing it for 25 years the guys like the lenders or somebody and you know these guys and they jump in your truck when we're going to do a shoot or you're at an event or something and they jump on the truck and you run them 100 yards over their car or something yeah and everyone always looks at me like because i'm listening to a little bit of trap music okay yeah i, I i'm kind of i'm eclectic I, I listen to a little bit of everything i do I, mean, I, like I like the hip-hop rap I'm not a big you know i'm not a big country person but dude like i listen to like I like listen to a bunch of shit. I'm I'm into Cody Jinx here a little bit, which is polar opposite for yeah. some Tupac. You know, so I'm into the I guess what do you want to call that outlaw country? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. But you know, I got a little bit of a hip hop vibe. I'm just kind of surprised you do. That's that California and maybe not that Kentucky uh, Matt coming out. Yeah, dude, I like uh, I like some good upbeat positive music. I don't like no sad music and uh, hip hop. You know, rap. Um, I don't know what you call some of this new music, like uh, some of these chick rappers or whatever. I don't know what you put that into, but you know, let's get let's get a top ten. Like, what's on your playlist right now? If we listen to the top ten most played songs by Old Maddie, 
Shit, man. Um, God almighty, you put me on the spot. I can't remember half the damn things. So I just go to Spotify and hit the damn playlist. But, um, I mean, some OG stuff, like some okay, like Tupac type of stuff. Uh, but... I'd go with some, I don't know if I'd go too OG. Like, if you want to go OG, OG, one of my favorite songs is the Humpty Dance by D Digital Underground. Like, that's getting back there. Um, but I, if you that's heard OG. Listen, that's OG. That is. But, like, if you, the music I really like, you're going to talk. Like, I like Jaw Rule and, like, a couple Jennifer Lopez songs or Jaw well, Rule. Jennifer Lopez? Uh, like, I'm a big Justin Timberlake fan. You can call it whatever you want. I don't give a shit. 50 Cent. <laughs> Uh, um, Nelly, can big Nelly fan. I mean, well, you kind of like some party rap. You, you I'm, yeah. see, I'm a little more into some. I, I don't mind some of that, but I some of that lovey gangster rap. I'm not into because it's not really gangster rap to me. I'm more yeah, into yeah. some of that uh, that like trap music, like you know, little like uh, like the baby. Um, God dang, what's some of the others? I listen. I've been listening to them a lot lately. Lately. So I mean, uh, like on you, you have satellite radio on your truck. Yeah. So what what station on satellite radio is getting to play? Um, I gotta tell you, like, um, pop two thousands. Maddie, I'm getting a little. I'm a <laughs> little <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> I'm a little, <laughs> little, little disappointed. What? Some good shit on the pop two thousands. Listen, dude, I, I'm gonna. I'm going to forgive you it's like a channel, little bit. Uh, channel 9. Jennifer and Lopez and, and shit. Yeah. Dude, J Jennifer Lopez, I heard. I heard Justin can you Timberlake. So I was can you like, imagine oh. him? He's out, he's out in a tournament. And we got Jenny from the block going. Right? <laughs> no, I, I mean, about it. we all know if we're going to do Jenny from the block. But Jennifer Lopez and Ja Rule, the and I got half a dozen songs that's pretty good together. Hey, listen, Jennifer Lopez by herself, boys. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll go, you know, some Jay Z. See, produ shit. producer dude is a music aficionado. And I, you know, I, I'm right, literally where I'm at right now is right by the Bass Islands on Lake Erie. Yeah. And I just about two weeks ago went over to South Bass Island and they oh, had boy. a private concert. You know where I'm going with this, don't you, producer? Yeah. They had a private concert with Tone Loke. And vanilla yeah. ice, a private yeah. event. I had, uh, oh yeah, I was there. Oh, I was there, and he was, no, he was yeah. kicking. I, I got a couple, I got a couple travels around the sun more than you do. Well, we're not yeah, that yeah. far off in age, and I'm telling you, like he, he played to like you know the like the '90s and hey kids yeah, on yeah. your phones, and he was, he was ripping the younger people up pretty good on there. Like, hey man, get off your freaking phone, and yeah. you know, remember when we used to have this and that? And he was, he was a good performer. I ain't saying he's a good rapper or anything, or. But Tom yeah. Loke, I mean, he he was God. He's got to be 55, 60 years old, and he was still bringing it. Crazy. Yeah. Now, did I like? I like all kinds. Like I can love the shit out of Whiskey Myers. Uh, the best song I ever heard in my life, and it was. Um, I watched Billy Strings and Les Claypool play uh, John the Fisherman down at the Ryman uh, play that together, and that was totally different than a, a regular Promise song, like with 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 them to incorporating their own sound into it it was awesome like one of the best things i've ever seen in my life and yeah so i mean dude like i even kick it back like people a lot of people hate them but i was a big nickelback fan as bad as i know people shit on them but i like shit out of them but i don't care I'm going to roll in somewhere a little segue, if you will. And maybe uh, I know now why, because, you know, we had Brandon Palinek on here just a little bit ago. Yeah. And he's, he, he used to do a little walleye fish in that West coast boy. And do you know, he was a wrestler, a state champion, two time yeah, state I'm champion wrestler. That little punk. <laughs> you, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, because I saw a video, you get your ass thrown in the lake and I didn't know, like, you know, maybe the guy that's listening to Jenner for, from the block or whatever, maybe that's why you got thrown in the lake. I ain't throwing shade, but I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying a lot of people don't realize that that boy, Caleb, is 245 pounds and has a six-pack. He's solid muscle. Like, I'm telling you, he's a freak athlete. He can run for 10 miles, and he's that big. Like, So who, 
who's been on this? Because I mean, I used to do the. That's why I said me and you. It's so funny and some of the parallels. Yeah. When I fished down the tour when we were traveling, these guys, I would always wrestle somebody. Like, dude, I want to race you. Me and the actually producer, dude, you have to schedule a video race. But I'd always like that competition, right? And I'm like, no, I'm going to wrestle you. Like, I wrestled in high school, played football. Let's, yeah. let's do this. And as producer, dude, reminds me that was a long ass time ago, and I'm going to hurt myself. But what is on the wrestling list? Like, who is what's what's the tiers here? So I got Caleb Summerall. He's a big bastard. Um, I wrestled Corey. I mean, they said I wrestled Chris. Corey, but was, Cor- Corey Johnston. Corey Johnston. Um, Did you beat him? Because he beat me twice. Three, and no, I beat me three times. Another time was a draw. I got a bad wrestling record. And I I'm seeing that. But I don't. You shouldn't be. The people you're picking on right now are not the not the ones that I would start with. No, buddy. Listen, that's the thing. Is you I started in the elites. You need to start in the BFLs. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I whenever I like, I don't want someone I know I can beat. Like, no offense, but I know Brandon's the state champion. And I know I'll probably get beat by him. But I, I've sized Brandon up and felt of him, and I, like, I just don't think that's going to happen. He's so a where do these fella. matches happen? Where are these wrestling Good matches question. happen? Good question. Everywhere, like. And the gra- the first one was in the damn sand at a restaurant at in the Saint at the St. John's River in Florida while we was eating dinner. And <laughs> I mean, dude, if it shit if the shit talk starts, we we'll can get to going. Are you are you a big shit talker? Oh, I'm the best there is. Maybe the only sh- better shit talker. Producer is- dude. Uh, it, my eyes I'm not saying the only ears did. <laughs> I talk more shit. Like Gerald Swindle's got me beat by a mile. Like, I don't want really? none of that smoke. Yeah, Gerald Swindle could talk some mad shit. He's got a better vocabulary than me. That's the problem. <laughs> and if I had Gerald Swindle's vocabulary, I could probably be, I could probably hang. But he, he's so does it not count shit. if you don't understand the words that he's saying, though? Maybe I can just Swind- talk really. Swindle is like a freestyle rapper. Yes, he he's smart, dude. He, people don't realize how smart he is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, but, he's, he's not dumb. Hit. I'll tell you I what. Let that- me tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Jacob Prosnick had me mounted and was on top of me. And all these boys <laughs> beat me, Caleb. And and I'm talking shit while they're on top of me. And I'm getting that shit beat out of me. Like, ain't too many people doing that. All right? That's the difference. You want to talk that's shit kind of a ratchet. Before, Ryan, that's, that's fine. Kind of a ratchet. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Caleb got me in a headlock, choking me out. I won't tap him. He's scared he's going to kill me. And we get off, and I'm like, Caleb, I said, there's one thing I do know, that you're a bigger damn sissy than me. I was like, because I'd have put you out. I said, your ass didn't have the balls to put me out. And uh, <laughs> that tore him up. <laughs> that tore him up. He didn't like that. But I will tell you, the next time, the next time it wasn't so funny. He, uh, He's a big boy. Did he hurt you the second time? Um. The next couple times, I never tapped, but he quit. But the last time we wrestled at Oahe, he had me in a chokehold. And it wasn't because I couldn't breathe. Like, I, I'm fine. Like, you can, I'm okay with him putting me to sleep. I was going to let him put me to sleep. But it's like something in the back. It felt like my, like, he's so damn strong. I thought my neck was going to break. If something was all pushing out of whack back there, I thought he was going to break my neck. So <laughs> that's the only reason. Only I mean, reason. thinking your neck might get broke is a pretty good reason to tap out. No, yeah, reason. like if I can't breathe, you might as well put me out because I'm never, if it comes to breathing and not breathing, I'm never tapping. If I think I'm going to get paralyzed, then I might hit the fire. You might be the toughest and dumbest guy that's 0-10 wrestling on the Bassmaster Tour right now. There ain't no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no doubt. 0-10 and 1. 0-10 and 1. Don't forget the draw. I mean, I beat, Gus, I, I beat Jeff Gustafson, so I do got one win under my belt. Okay. Now, now I know Gussie. Okay, so here's the deal. He's like the nicest guy ever. I listen. He wanted some of it, so I give it time. I, I find it hard to believe that. Was there some some liquid encouragement involved? Yeah, there was, but he still lost. There's liquid encouragement on in on a few of these and not on a few of these, but nonetheless, I can't see Gussie just running out and 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 challenging you. Gussie grabbed a hold of me. I, he was behind me and grabbed a hold of me. I didn't even start that. I didn't have no, I didn't want to do it. Although he, you know, he's got the fire. I saw him go um, on uh, uh, Lefebvre 
Lefebvre or whatever. He yeah. he pulled some he pulled some bullshit on Gussie a couple of years ago. I saw the, the video of that. Man. Yeah, he yeah, he he yeah, the nice Canadian went into kill mode there, which and yeah. it was deservingly so, but yeah, nevertheless. So who who is gonna be on this list of, of wrestlers? I mean, I, I think the Palinic thing, like we got a video of this. No, yeah, like me and Palinic's got a little thing worked out. We're gonna have a little wrestling match. Uh get it all worked out it's gonna be it's all in fun i love the hell out of that boy i've known him before he's on the late series and uh and yeah he uh we're gonna get together maybe do a little charity event do some wrestling maybe we're gonna try to get some other anglers involved and uh yeah we might even let uh the fans decide who wrestles who but uh whenever it comes down to it, me like a bracket like a bracket system oh no we're gonna let him like vote on it dollar a vote or something like that and uh, if you want to see me and Brandon or Caleb and Lee or whoever, or Caleb and Corey Johnston and whoever, whoever's involved, you know, you know, throw a dollar in there. You can vote for, for whoever you want. You want to put a hundred votes towards whoever that's fine too, you know, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's what we talked about. And I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but yeah, we're going to have some fun doing it. You know, I, I'm thinking, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I want to put you on the spot. I feel like yeah. me and you need to have a fishing, like I'll take you walleye fishing, you take me bass fishing, yeah, and let's have let's have a shit talking fishing tournament with wrestling at the end. We could probably do that. I mean, I mean, you're you're a big boy. I mean, I'm six three two hundred, but I mean, you're a big boy yeah. too. Yeah, I'm six two two twenty five. Yeah, seems pretty yeah. Mm-hmm. very comparable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think I, I think that there could be, you know, maybe we do a charity thing too. I mean, producer dude to tell you, we 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 do not have a lack of shit talkers around our deal. I mean, well, it's, I'll go ahead and tell you this. I mean, I'm more than well, I'm more than welcome to introduce you to the the hall of the the wall of shame with Gussie, you know. So, I mean, you you dude, know, I, sit right next to him. I got to be honest with you. I feel like you're going to actually have to beat a couple people before I even let you take me on because I don't really wrestle people with like, oh, and 10 records. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I, but... it's like I'm not going to let you into the elite series when you can't win a BFL. That's kind of how I'm, I'm looking tell at you it. This. Ain't nobody I might make an exception for your ass. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't nobody wanting a piece of anybody I wrestled. I'll tell you that. I didn't never go grab Seth Potter and just whip up on his little skinny butt. But anybody I got a hold of was a man. So I, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. Is there anybody else? There's anybody that ever turned you down? Uh, no, not, not that I can think of. I usually keep it with the boys, you know, cause we like, we hang out together. We're all friends and, and, you know, don't like to rough house with somebody. I ain't really my friend. Cause then it can go too far. Turn sideways, you know, sitting sideways for sure. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I think that with bass fishing, there's a lot of companies that like didn't like walleye fishing because of the group or team atmosphere. And it seems, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's happening now with the bass thing. So I'm interested to see kind of how that, um, you know, just like your your the Johnson brothers, like they they've made it known they share money or got one oh, yeah. account or whatever. Now, granted, they're brothers, but yeah. you know, things like that in the past were kind of unheard of. Um, and the, sh- the little groups, whether it's information or whatever in the past that used to be maybe sharing a room or a, a house or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's kind of changed quite a bit. The only way you can trust someone 100% is if you share the money, if you share the winnings. That's the only way you can trust anybody because that's the only way you're vested in another person as much as you are yourself. Is there anybody else sharing money that you know of? No, there's not. I guarantee it. Yeah, that, that would be being tough. Sad, that being said, I trust them boys of my life. So, but if if there's a bulletproof way of doing it, you got to share your part. You got to share your winnings. Makes sense. Yeah. So, what would be the thing? Because I, I don't think people really understand this. Like, people all the time go, oh, I want to fish for a living. And I tell them all the time, well, go for it. Like, it's not like I'm the best fisherman on the planet, but I've been able to make my entire living for 20 some years doing it. Yeah. Because I just I bust some ass on it and we're you just constantly going. Yeah. What What do you think that you've had to, are the big things that you've given up, you know, to, to have a, because I don't think people really 
No, I don't dude, think you it's your whole life. You sacrifice time with your family and relationships suffer because of it. And yeah, dude, you get you're gonna you're gonna live on the road. And a lot of people think they want that, but I don't know if they really do. I'm gonna tell you. Like, it's a hard life. Yeah. I I mean for you, is tournament fishing your life or is it competitive fishing or could you see yourself being a bill dance no i like i like tournament fishing if i didn't tournament fish um i don't know how much i'd fish anymore it's it's kind of like a competition really? thing. yeah i don't like i think i'd have me a nice break from it i gotta tell you like if i didn't tournament fish i think i might go saltwater fish i mean i've saltwater fish son that's fun as shit you can go out with the boys you know you got the camaraderie and um i like the competition a lot of people ain't like that but i love the competition i'm doing a little saltwater fishing down there in the gulf in a couple of weeks myself nice but uh yeah that, that's it's just a different it's totally different you go out there with ten dollars worth of tackle and yeah. you know throw some live bait and they just yeah 400 different things can hit you or whatever but yeah i think that that fishing lifestyle thing i just you know, some guys ain't cut up to be, I guess, like, well, like we talked about before, let's say Gary Klein or Rick yeah. Klun, they're, you know, Roland Martin now. There's not too many guys that have been competitive for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, and I, I, one of those things, like, if you start, I don't want to say getting your ass whooped, but if you're in the middle of a pack at best, are you still doing this in 20 years, 10 years? Um, yeah, I think so. I think what so. What if you're at the bottom of the pack? Well, then you're barely, gonna, you're barely making cut. Well, that's what I mean. If you're right at the cut line. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. You have up and down years. You have bad stretches. You have sh you have shit happen in life, and uh, yeah, they like as long as you're still in in the cut and grind away and tell everybody who thinks you shouldn't be there to go get <laughs> lessons to live by. I like it. Yeah. Well, leave us with a few things that a proper bassin proper bass man should be doing should be doing um put in the hard work yourself find your own fish don't watch other fishermen on the water to find fish and uh yeah just go do it yourself i like it i i uh i don't know when we're gonna do this wrestling match but at some point we're gonna we're gonna do it we can do it and shit talking i know i got you beat at that yeah. I, oh, yeah. It's, I don't know. Yeah, I, I got say arm around your throat, so I don't know how much shit talking you're going to do, buddy. <laughs> so. it's, hard, it's hard to do that when you're on your knees upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Producer dude is just over there salivating about trying to get a video. So oh, yeah, like we got to get him up here. <laughs> you you got to go look up and see one of our – did we just lose him? Yeah. We, oh, there, there he is. is. I was just saying, hey, did you just tap out already? We lost you for a second. No, I no, I got you got afraid or some shit. <laughs> got a damn phone call. Uh, yeah, we, we got this guy that's been with me for 20 some years. We call him Country Steve now, which it's a long yeah. story how he got that name. But um, he, producer dude, is it fair to say that he's not the first guy you'd want to tangle with? Oh, uh, and the, yeah, and the shit talking. Uh, yeah, you guys go at it pretty good. Yeah. Oh, I big just head. Stay out, I stay out of it. If I don't, I can't, you know, some of the guys and these guys, we've been together for 20 years and we're like yeah. all independent guys, but we can come together and not kill each other, even though there's yeah. moments kind of like, you know, probably some of those guys you've been with. Oh yeah. If, if you don't have some, some guys you can talk some serious shit with, uh, cause I see a lot of guys, they can't do it with their fishing guys. I don't, I don't understand how you can't like, I don't think that you're that tight. If you don't, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we definitely cut it up and give each other hell. We're a tight group and uh yeah, dude, I'm with you like I don't know, there's guys who don't talk shit, but I think I think they're scared of not doing good if they do, but whatever. We still do it. Well there and then, you know, like, even like Kevin Van Dam, people don't realize like he talks some shit. Like, yeah. he, you know, he, he's one of the biggest, he's like the Dale Earnhardt of bass fishing. Like he'll intimidate yeah. you verbally or like non verbally. Yeah. Like most of those guys. Yeah. But some of them play it maybe to the public, not like they would to right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Me yeah. and you are, yeah. me and you are just like a dumpster fire of 
and here we go. <laughs> yeah, I just I've never been any other way, and it's got me into a lot of trouble throughout life. But it just kind of is what it is. It's got me this you, far. We're gonna keep rolling. Could you just leave us with one or two reasons on how it got you into a dumpster fire? Do what? Like, could you leave us with the one or two things that happened that got you into dumpster fire? But being the way you are, oh, you know, I've been fired five or six times. You know, running my mouth. Um, just yeah, they just shit like that, you know. Um, get a few ass whoopings. So, <laughs> well, I know you don't. I know you don't give them out because you're like Owen. Oh, I've gave a few out, but that, I mean, whooping somebody's ass ain't a story worth telling. Tell me a story about you whooping somebody's ass. Oh yeah, what'd you do? Hit the guy there three times. You knocked him out. That ain't a good story. It, Funnier it stories whenever you get your ass whooped. <laughs> I don't have many of those to tell. No. <laughs> Time I'm just to signed Agamon. Oh, I know. I I'm know. Just Agamon. Hey, we in all seriousness, I didn't think there's too many bass guys that I could like. Them, yeah. you know, ditch pickle guys, green carp guys, but I think you're one of them, and I hope we can uh, recoup some things and get on the water and do something one day. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll get her going. Hey, appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning yeah, in buddy. to the Big Water Podcast. Make sure you check us out at bigwaterfishing.com. Check us out at Instagram, Facebook. Again, Big Water Fishing. Producer dude, we're on what? Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple. Anywhere pretty much you can get your podcasts. That's what he's saying. Make sure you check out old Matt Robertson. And if you want to get some Onum gear, where the heck are we going to see that? Uh, onumfishing.com, man, running a 20% off sale right now. Actually, uh, use code onum, all lowercase, and uh, onumfishing.com. Sounds good. Matt, thanks again for your time. I appreciate it, fellas.